My background uh, started as a very shy child. I was very uncomfortable with the thought of communicating to others. And I'm sure there are some of us in this room who can kind of relate to that shyness. Is there anyone in the room who've ever felt like that? Okay, a lot of us, right? But there was something that inspired me to think differently. And what I wanted to do was, uh, let me just see if my clicker here is working. I don't think it is. So I can work from here if you like. Is it working? Okay, so let me just back up. All right, so um, what inspired me about communication is this, all the way to the first slide. All right, you got it? Okay, great. So what inspired me was when I was a child, I felt really, really uncomfortable about communicating, but I knew what I wanted to do. And so I started studying some of the great leaders. I started studying people in my community. I started studying people globally. I looked at them and figured, how can they do it? How can they move people? Whether it's a small group or a large group, how do they do this? And it really comes from emotion. But how do you get there? What is that piece that you need, right? So, and that usually starts with the strategy that you have. So in order to improve our communication, we, um, Okay, I'm just gonna click right from here. All right, so how do you bring, communication will help you bring out your best, it will help you create a positive culture, and you'll be able to hire people more efficiently, you'll be able to find co-founders, and ultimately raise money if that's what your goal is. So it's about authenticity. It's not really about perfecting your communication style, because what you want to have is all those quirks in you. You want to have your individuality because all of you makes you unique. And that's what's so important to bring to the table. Because if we do what we think that we should do all the time, it becomes rather boring. So we want to really bring out the best of us. And there's no one like us. You know, there's billions of people in the world, but it's amazing that there is no one just like you. You are made up of something that is so unique and so powerful. So we perform many different roles in our lives, and we are filled with layers of the past, future, and present. And some of those past layers are wonderful because they make up who we are, whether it comes from a political background, religious, uh, schooling, culture, it doesn't matter. Some of those layers are so important to us, but yet some of those layers get in our way. Do you know what I mean? Some of the history, I know, I know mine has gotten in my way, where I thought things like, well, I can't do this. I'm not smart enough. I don't look the part. I'll never get in. I'll never be able to compete, right? Where did all this come from? Sometimes it comes from how we grew up. Sometimes it comes from teachers. Sometimes it comes from friends, community. We don't know where it comes from. But what we do need is self-awareness. So we can then adjust ourselves appropriately. Because when you're here in this room, you can only bring you, and you need to bring you in the best possible way, and I'm talking, this is heightened kind of communication. This is formal communication. That's what I teach what I teach, because I can teach you strategy. I can teach you how to be up here. I can teach you how to be in front of an investor and wow that investor. And that is something that, to me, is quite extraordinary. So, the layers. The layers are something that are so incredibly powerful. 
uh, like the onion here, we have so many of them. So we begin to peel away those layers so that we can see who we are. And we really just want to bring out our best. And the way that we do this is we start to look at our inner thoughts. How do you speak to yourself? Are you aware of it? I mean, sometimes I'm having a bad day and I'm saying, oh, I'm such an idiot. Why did I do that? Oh, what a stupid mistake. If I only said this, it would have went that way. Sometimes we're really hard on ourselves, but yet begin to change that conversation, right? Which sometimes we can be the hardest on us, but if we begin to change that conversation, we begin to come in with a new kind of confidence. And there's nothing like confidence. And confidence starts up here. That's where, it, that's where it begins. And it's the conversation that you have with yourself, which is the most important. That will determine your success in life, personally and professionally. Does that sound right? Yeah? All right. So, Roger Bannister, do you know who he is? Does anyone have an idea? All right. You know that this man broke the four-minute mile back in the 1950s. It was never done, and it was unheard of, and it was thought physically impossible that someone could run a mile in four minutes or under. But yet, he defied the odds. He talked to himself, and he said, you know what? I can do this. I can do this. And he gave himself the confidence. And he did a lot of positive talking, and he also visualized. He saw himself running the race. He saw himself practicing, and he saw himself winning. And in 1954, he was the first man ever to break the four-minute mile. And ever since then, he's become a benchmark for every runner. It's, it's absolutely amazing, his story. So now I'd like for you to ask yourself, what is it that you really want? And what's preventing you from reaching your goal? And what are you afraid of? Really, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of the power that you have that you haven't even unleashed yet? Are you afraid of your potential? Right? You want to try and bring out the best that you can. So I want to ask you, what do you think is the number one fear in the world? Who thinks it's planes? Cars? Not Dorian. <laughs> okay. Public speaking, you're absolutely right. It is the number one fear in the world, people speaking in front of groups. But I'm here to tell you that you don't have to be like him, that there is a strategy, and that strategy will help you get out of your heads and help you be in the moment. Because when you're in the moment, you're not fearful. But when you're in your head, you're fearful. Because you're doubting yourself, you're not sure of your content. And those are the times that will really hurt your presenting. So you want to be here in the moment. I cannot be thinking right now about what I did yesterday or what I didn't do enough of or am I doing okay. The only thing that I can do is get a sense of who you are in the room and connect with you and try my best to be in the moment with you. And that's what it's all about. So technology has really changed the game in our world. Wouldn't you say? Technology has changed communication. We were in the information age where it was like the information highway. We just had so much to choose from when we looked on the computer, when we went to the net and surfed. But yet, events started to happen from that. Meetup.com, who's aware of meetup.com? There you go, it was one of the first 
online event platforms, and that started to bring people together. That occurred after, I believe, 2011. And Scott Heiferman, who is the CEO, was inspired by 9-11. And so he wanted to start bringing people together. Well, the events just started coming, and there were more and more, and all of a sudden people had to communicate, and now people were pitching, and now there's so many startup founders and so many C-level executives, but yet, do we have the skill? You know, and many of us were questioning that. Do we have the skill? Do we have the right to be speaking in front of others? And, yeah, so one of my first clients, you may know, and she is a remarkable woman, and I'm very proud of her and what she's achieved. It's absolutely incredible. Very versatile and successful entrepreneur. And so Cheryl Yeo had everything going for her, absolutely everything. And she was smart enough to know that Public speaking, she needed some training on. Presenting, she needed some training on. She had it all here, it was all in the head, and she had the right instincts, but we were working on how do you present to an audience? How do you get an idea down to the best piece of it? Just the germ, just the germ of, a, of an idea, just the, the gold, how do you take that out? And then how do you connect? with your audience. So we practiced and practiced, and we went over technique, and there were times it was like, oh my God, Kelly, I cannot do this anymore. And it was like, yes, Cheryl, you can. Just keep going, you're almost there, you're almost there. And it was like having a breakthrough. And then, you know, to go out in front of a thousand people and wow them, but that's what she did. And so it comes down to, how well do you communicate? And I want to tell you that, Everyone in this room can become better. Everyone in this room can learn a strategy. I guarantee it. I know that you can become better. That's why I'm in what I'm in, because I absolutely love communication, because it's something that's always changing, something that you can always get better in. So then how you know, do we influence and motivate others to think better, to become leaders? And at the end of the day, it's you need a roadmap, and your strategy is key, right? So in order to speak well from, from the heart center, first we have to work on what's in here. So it's the self-awareness. Yes, it's what we talked about, how we think of ourselves. We need to change that conversation. But now it's also about your who, what, where, why, when. And the what is, what is your objective? What do you want? What does your audience want? Why do they want it? The why is so important. Why do you want it? You know, and then how will you go about getting what you want? And that, to me, is the most intriguing piece. So I can do all the homework, figure out what's the what. What exactly do you want in this room? Right? And universally, I have an idea. I know that you want to present better. And I had an idea of the demographics of the room. I had an idea of the culture of the room. I even stepped into the room last night to feel the room. So I know how much energy to send in. I'm a great technician. I've been on stage for almost my entire life. So I can tell you how my voice can throw to the back of the room, how my voice can be affected in front of the room. The technique I, I really learned. What I had to learn was how to connect from the head to the heart, you know? And so once I found the technique, it helped me. And your why, your how, is so important. And you know how the how comes about? The how comes about in the moment. The how is, how am I going to make you feel? Am I going to make you feel loved? Am I going to make you feel important? It's the reason why I'm walking over here to you because I don't want to be at the podium and not attend to this side of the audience. So I want to make sure that everyone in this audience feels my presence 
and that you feel significant, you feel important. Does that make sense? You can have the strategy, you can have all the data, you can have all the information that you need, you can map out every piece of that detail, all the graphs, but when you're in front of an audience, whether it's one person, whether it's an interview, whether you're on the telephone, whether you're in front of the media like Cheryl has been, or whether or not you're speaking to a thousand people, you need to connect with the audience and the how will get you there. But you know, you have to get out of your head to do the how successfully, right? Because I cannot be in my head if I wanna make you feel something. Does that make sense? Yes, yes? So now we come to fall in love with storytelling again. Storytelling is ancient. I'm sure that you all remember your parents telling you wonderful stories when you were a child. And you learned a lot from them. You learned about morals. You learned about uh, right from wrong. You learned about culture. You learned about heroes. You learned about villains. You learned about how communities operated. Right? All this came from storytelling. And storytelling is how we remember data. And it's one of the most powerful things that you can do. So take your audience on a journey. Paint, do a, a visual paint with descriptive words, analogies, uh, antithesis, I mean, it goes into rhetoric, but you can do so much with the story and make it so much more powerful. And entrepreneurs, when we're only given a minute sometimes to pitch, I mean, five minutes if we're lucky, right? You really have to connect with your audience and you really have to give them a great, great story. So stories anchor your objective and they can be very powerful. Now back in, in ancient Greece here, um, let's say if you were having dinner at a friend's house and all of a sudden that friend accused you of stealing something and you were like, I didn't steal anything, but yet he called the police. Well, the police would come, take you away, arrest you, you'd be thrown in jail, but the one good thing is that you would be given a trial. And at that trial, now remember, there were no lawyers at this time. So it was only you and you presenting your side of the story. So you would go in front of the Senate here, right? All of these people, and you would be presenting your story. Well, one thing that you needed to make sure that was intact is that you're, you had integrity, that you were walking into that room, that you were confident, that your integrity would shine through. And that another piece was that you needed to be logical. Your story needed to make sense. And the most important thing that you needed in that room was emotion. Because you had to convince and persuade all of those people some of them may have liked you. Some of them, just from looking at you, may have not liked you. And so what you needed to do was to make that connection. And that connection was, could mean life or death. So you wanted to make sure that you could connect with them. And that's, this is ancient, folks, right? Communication at this type of level is ancient. We're all used to heightened communication. We're all used to having something that we want to say so badly sometimes to someone, and we say it in the most dramatic and concise and powerful way because we might only have just a few minutes to get our point across because we may never ever see that person again. Have we ever had an experience like that? Have you? where it's powerful, you know, it's something you, it just speaks from the heart at that point. And that's where we want to be when we're pitching, we're presenting, even in our personal lives. So what happens when you're losing the room, right? We talked about how to win the room, but let me tell you what can happen when you can lose the room. Losing the room is lower energy. It's me coming into this space and being like, hi, 
How are you? Doing okay? Yeah, all right. What do you want to know? All right, okay, well, oh, I need a cup of coffee. That can lose the room. That's low energy, right? But this is performance. I have to increase the energy. So I want to bring my best into the room. What else? Negative, negative energy. If I'm feeling bad, or if I'm feeling unsure, or if I'm feeling something that's negative, you will feel it. And as a result, you will feel uncomfortable with me. I don't want that. So what's the other piece? An open body. Open body language will help you tremendously. Right? There's many people who stand and they're like this and they're kind of like all crunched up and you know, they're not very comfortable, right? Well, they don't look very confident. However, if I open up my body language like this, I'm showing you that I care and that I'm showing you that I'm here with you and that I'm ready to share. I'm not closing myself in. Sure, every once in a while it's okay to go like this. There's no problem as long as we're smiling, right? That's another piece of keeping the body language open. So it's about integrity. It's about the emotions. Do the emotions resonate with you? And it's about creating, you know, this this level of trust so we don't disengage. So now how do you win the room? Winning the room is higher energy, it's positive, the body language is open, it has integrity, the emotions resonate with you. I make you feel good, I make you feel positive, right? And then our story resonates. So what happens to you? The trust happens. You begin to engage with me. And then the conversation opens up because only now I can shift your perspective. And only now I can perhaps raise capital, perhaps find a co-founder, perhaps have a successful team meeting. All of this will help you be able to win the room. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, great. Um, so our next image, I love this image, by the way. I studied art history, so I just love these elaborate, colorful images. But it's about the who, what, where, when, and why. Our brain appreciates a mapping of strategy. So you know, think about you know, what you want to say, how you want to say it, why, because it's so important. The left side of the brain really, really responds to the what, and the right side of the brain really responds to the why. So you want to make sure that you're connecting with both sides of the brain. Now, storytelling, going back to it, you need all those elements to be very successful with it. And we have to keep that in mind, that it is a heightened form of communication, this type of communication. It's heightened, it's, it's in the moment, and so you wanna make sure that you bring the best. So how do we inspire and motivate? We inspire and motivate by the strategy, but then we start to connect. Once we have the strategy, we leave that behind and we connect in the moment. So right now, what I would like for you to do, because most of us don't realize the power that we have, we don't even, we aren't able really to access the inner power that we have. And this is something that I, I love to do with my clients. So right now, I'm going to ask all of you to stand up, okay? And we'll do a fun little exercise. And what I would like for you to do is to put your um, index finger on your clavicle. Your clavicle is right here, right in the center of it, just very gently. And what I would like for you to do now is just take a deep breath in. You all look so wonderful. So take a deep breath in, breathe out, in and out, nice deep breaths. And now what I would like for you to do is to do a ha, and I'll do it for you, and then you'll do it, okay? So it goes something like this. Ha. Great. Let's do that one more time. 
Ready? One, two, three. Ah. There's power. There's power in your voice. Your voice can be so rich in resonance. And you want to make sure when you're in heightened communication uh, situations that you're able to project outside of yourself. You're able to project. You all can sit now. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so it's great. I love, love the how. Uh, so the voice is resonant. And um, the ha is in, so important to connect with your power, to energize the room. As we all saw and experienced, we felt that energy. The voice has incredible energy. And when I'm speaking properly, I'm sending energy out, and you're feeling that energy. Does that make sense? Because if I'm speaking to you like, hi, how are you? OK, well, my next one is, uh, Oh, well, let's see, uh, maybe I'll talk about something about startups. That's unexciting, right? There's no energy there. But if I say to you, I want to tell you all about my startup, there's some energy there, and I'm sending you emotion. So the artist is nothing without the gift, but the gift is nothing without work. And that's what has led me to communication, just the idea that we can always be improving upon it. I have two companies. One is Win the Room, and it's a public speaking and leadership company. And then my other company is MSOR, and MSOR is an online education company that focuses solely on communication, and it brings experts from all over the world who teach their expertise in communication, because communication is what we need right now, because we're changing the world. We're changing the, the landscape every single day, the technology landscape, the way that we do business. Everything is changing, and we're at the forefront. So it, it's really quite amazing. So the main thing is, is to practice, 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 and the way that you communicate will be a great measure of how you succeed. And I just want to say that it's been an incredible pleasure to be standing here and speaking with you today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kelly. Please give her another round of applause. So uh, we can do a Q&A. Do you want to ask Kelly any questions? There's got to be one question in the room. Just one. I'll bring the Come mic on, to guys. you. Yeah. Hey, Bill. Hi, Kelly. Hi. A useful tip for um, if you lose your train of thoughts while you're giving a presentation in your pitch, how do you get back to where you need to be? That um, is in the what, so that's your objective. And you have to make sure that your objective, you can boil it down just to one sentence. It's your thesis, it's everything. And if your thesis it's really, is really clear, it's like back in college, your professor would say, make sure that you have a really strong thesis if you're writing a 20 page paper. And I was always give like a one page sentence. And that never worked. And then I would come back with a paragraph, and that didn't work. I had to come back with that one sentence. Couldn't even be a compound sentence. It had to be one simple sentence. So make it as clear as possible, and that will help you with your train of thought and not lose it. Because sometimes what we do is we compound and put more on it, and we lose our sense of what we really want. Another question? Uh, what are some tips to actually uh, improve your impromptu speaking? Some tips to improve how to think um, on your feet kind of thing? Think of other uh, impromptu, impromptu speeches. What are the tips to improve on impromptu speeches? Impromptu. Yes. 
Impromptu is, well, there's some, if you know where you're going, if you know like the type of room that you're going into, you can figure out some strategy beforehand. And if you know who the audience is, if they're in finance, if they're artists, if they're entrepreneurs, so you get an idea. So know as much as you possibly can. And then if you're asked to speak, you can just speak from the heart. And I'm sure you would be speaking about your level of expertise. And at that moment, you can't really be thinking about strategy. At that moment, you can only be thinking about connecting with you. And if you from, connect from the heart, you'll make an impact. Another question? Yes. All right, someone from the top. Yay. Hi, um, I have a question. At times when you, um, you're talking to your audience and you do, you, you've pre-organized everything that you want to say and whatnot, but then, um, you know, at times you, you do get the nervousness. So you get what? Uh, you get the nervous. Nervous, feeling. right. Yeah, you get nervous. Um, so from one point to another point, um, I understand you need to have a few pauses uh, when you get, you know, that nervous feeling. So uh, can you um, actually, uh, from your own experiences, what do you do if you get that feeling um, of nervousness? So you to know, get the, the point flowing. Yeah, yeah. You know, remember in the beginning I said that I was very shy. I was very awkward. And uh, I remember when I first started, the paper would shake. I, my hands would shake. I would sweat. And part of the problem was is because I was in here so much. And I brought what was in here up here. And so it didn't work for me. And I had to find a way to speak, to project outside of me. Because when I'm in a room with someone, whether it's just one person or whether it's a lot of people, it's not about me anymore. And if I don't bring me and all the past and all the habitual responses and all the layers, and I just bring me in the moment, meaning now I'm open. Now I'm listening to you. Now I'm so focused on you. And I want to know what's going on with you? What's important with you? And when I ask you a question, that has to come from a place of, of truthfulness because that's the only way I can get rid of that nervousness. Of course you can do deep breathing. Of course you can like do that ha, which I showed you, and that releases a lot of energy. And why I had you do that is so that we send energy out Right? Because when we're in a room like this, we do want to be extroverted. And I don't mean extroverted and introverted. Introverted has nothing to do with shyness. Extroverted just means where you put energy, right? And where you receive it. I'm an extrovert. I'm shy, but I'm an extrovert. So I get my energy from a lot of people in the room. I get excited. A thousand people in the room, I'm like, wow, that's great. An introvert will want to have that they go within, they get their energy from within, from those quiet moments. So if you're an introvert, you need to learn how to project out, if that makes sense. So it's about how you think in here, and it's about being in the moment, being concerned about your audience, and being aware of how you're projecting out to them. And if you emotionally affect people, you're less thinking about yourself. Yes. Uh, Kelly, I agree with you when you said um, storytelling is very important. And I heard once someone said, um, always make a point to tell a story and tell a story to make a point. So for yourself, how did you learn how to storytell, all right, and not to go overboard with it? Yeah. I studied Shakespeare and Chekhov for years. And uh, it's one of the reasons when I said I was shy, I wanted to learn a great strategy. And Shakespeare definitely offers you that. And so one of the things about storytelling is that the story has to be so 
clean. You have to know exactly what it is that you want to say. And the how, the, the pathos of a story is very important. And the pathos is the emotion. So how do I want to make you feel? And, you know, of course, the story needs logic. But to tell a good story, you have to take people on a journey. And there's strategy that you can do for that. You can use descriptive languages, language, words. You can use an antithesis. You can use similes. You can use so many of uh, what's in our grammar, what's in our structure in all languages. But to tell a good story, and even when you're reading a great novel, it's making you feel something, right? I mean, the reason why that you're so in love with that novel that you read is because it took you to another level and it made you feel something. And with all the descriptiveness in it, it created more visuals in your head so you were able to remember the facts and the, the parts about the story that the writer or the speaker wanted you to remember. Does that make sense? Kelly, you want to tell them about the workshop, please? Oh, yes. Are you guys coming to the workshop at noon? Yes, yes? All right. We'll be talking about um, pitching your deck and uh, just perfecting that. And I can't wait to see you all later. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kelly.